Hey guys, my name is Kevin. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing virtual desktop versus AirLink versus Steam Link. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, Valve did release a app, um, the Steam Link app, which has been around forever. Um, you used to use it on the um, Steam Link hardware box. You could use it on your phone, you use it on your TV, um, whatever mobile device you have. It's been around forever. It's built into the Steam Deck for just streaming, in-house, or remote play, similar to what the um, PlayStation Portal does. They've added that to the Quest 3 and Quest 2. And that's really cool, and I love that. But since it's come out, all I've seen are questions about which is better, Virtual Desktop, Air Link, or Steam Link. Mostly Virtual Desktop and Steam Link. Now, my answer to a lot of this is I think people approach it all the wrong way. I've seen people just scream the superiority of um, Virtual Desktop. I've seen people just scream the superiority for Steam Link. I personally prefer the Steam Link. But no tool there is perfect. All of them have their faults. All of them have their ups and their downs. For me, there are really three things that I want to really, really discuss in this uh, particular topic without making the video too long. Um, and that is number one. Everything just sucks. Unless you are like just the most untech savvy person ever when it comes to using a computer with a VR headset, which I don't think is most of you. I think it's like a very small niche of a niche of people who just can't like get a YouTube video on a, on a tutorial just to figure out how to get the AirLink going or to do anything beyond AirLink, I mean. Unless you're just one of those people who just don't have the tech savvy to look up a YouTube video to figure out, hey, how do I set up AirLink with my PC? Don't use it. And I'm including the Quest Link cable there, too. I know they're two different things. I'm calling them both AirLink because, really, the quality there is just bogus. It's what comes with the Quest. There aren't a lot of options there. It doesn't look very good. It doesn't run well. In fact, it makes game, It oftentimes will make your games look and run worse than they would with the other options. Yeah, it's free, and that's but that's the only advantage it has to it, and I think Steam Link actually kills that disadvantage. On top of the fact that it's just too many steps to get in there. You gotta start your quest. Then you have to, you know, make sure your course you're on the right Wi-Fi band. Then you have to make sure that Air Link is turned on. Make sure you unplug the cable or plug it in, depending on if you're using Quest Link or Air Link. Click on the Quest Link uh, app to open it up. Then you have to go find Steam VR once you're in the Rift desktop and hope it loads. Don't even waste your time. It's too inconsistent. Meta has proven that they are not going to update it. It still has Rift branding. We've been away from Rift for how long? And <laughs> they're still using Rift branding on this? It's not worth your time. Don't even bother. It's a waste of time. Number two, Steam Link is free. Steam Link being free and being as good as it is, it has no business being as good as it is. And what I especially love about it is that it's convenient. You get good performance. Actually, my performance is actually better there than it is on virtual desktop, but people have told me here and there they've gotten both. Um, the games look great. Virtual desktop does look a little bit better, but Steam Link looks great. They run be they, um, run really good. Everything runs better than Air Link. Um, and I like that it's basically a one-click solution. As long as I was recently using the um, Steam Link, I just turn on my Quest, Steam Link pops up automatically, and all I do is hit Connect once it's, our, once it's set up that first time. And that first time is really just, oh, well, you're using Steam Link. Cool. What's the pairing code? P take the pairing code, punch it in on Steam. You're in there in a few seconds. I did a video on that last week. Um, I'll put the link up for it somewhere up here, wherever it goes. And you guys can see it. it's a really simple process. I think it's like a two minute video. It's so easy. Um, <clears throat> and then once you're in there, you just click connect and you're in the Steam Virtual Desktop in seconds. If you're just using it for Steam VR, that is incredible. And that's what Steam Link is actually for anyway. So that's awesome. Um, are there any downsides to Steam Link? Yes. Um, some games controllers just don't work right or work well. Uh, sometimes games will be a little dark. And you have to just, you know, figure that out or, you know, you can go into your gamma and change some settings. But by default, um, it is a little dark, but it's also a tool that's been out for maybe two weeks. 
So I do expect, you know, Valve is going to update it, especially if you look at Valve's recent track record um, where they've been basically updating everything over the last year, year and a half or so. Valve is going to get this right and they're going to uh, make it a lot better. Third point, virtual desktop is incredible. Like, I don't want to take anything away from virtual desktop. It is a Swiss Army knife power tool. It, it does take a couple more steps to get into your games, but it's not like, oh my God, inconvenient. Um, one thing that they figured out that they have it in Steam Link, which I don't like, is they don't take away your in-game menu. Um, if you use the um, left quest controller and you hit the menu button, you can actually get to your in-game menu, which is something you can't do on um, Steam Link yet. It'll just take you to um, basically your Steam layout. So, and then if you hit the right one on the quest, you're going to get the quest little UI that allows you to quit out of Steam Link. Which, personally, I wish they would just move the Steam, um, the, um, Steam stuff over there and then just let me use my in-game menu on the left. Here nor there. Um, either way, you know, that is something that's available in um, Virtual Desktop. They also do controller emulation, which I have not seen um, any kind of Steam input with Steam Link at all. Um, I'm hoping that comes in the future as well, because I think that would actually be really awesome um, if you could change, because this will allow you to just basically force Steam to think whatever c controller you're using is effectively the knuckles for the index or whatever controller you want it to be. That would be pretty great, um, but I know that's probably further down the line. Um, so yeah, um, just overall, there's so many things, so many tweakable options in virtual desktop. Of the three, virtual desktop has by far the most depth. So if you just want, like I said, a Swiss uh, Army power tool that does everything possible, everything you could even imagine, go with virtual desktop. It also looks the best. Um, in my experience, Steam Link does run a little bit better, but virtual desktop isn't god off on performance either. I'm going to go into some clips now. We're going to show you guys just what I mean about the comparisons, at least between Steam Link and um, Virtual Desktop in terms of graphics. I'm going to be using Half-Life Alex, and we're just going to go through just some, um, just some options there just so you guys can see exactly what I mean. This is Half-Life Alex using Steam Link. Um, what I really want you guys to really pay attention to is these frame time graphs, the green bars. Um, that are on the bottom and what we're looking for is a significant um, low amount of jitter and the frame rate now the reason the frame rate here is in the red here is because I told my headset to target 120 um, frames per second which it doesn't do very well on this particular game other games it does it better but as you see here for what it is and for what the game honestly is kind of capable of and you'll see you'll see frame rates in the 60s and 70s on both setups here. I didn't do Air Link. I only did Virtual Desktop and Steam Link. You're going to see that we're going to pretty much stay in that 60 to 80 FPS range for this particular game, which is actually kind of fine. Um, <clears throat> and you're going to see here the games, they look great across the board. Um, there's not too much to really, really um, complain about here in terms of performance. Like if I turned off that graph, I wouldn't have any problems. No real jitters. Um, you do get a couple of load stutters um, here and there, but nothing um, unmanageable. So we're going to watch through the rest of this gameplay, and then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to switch over to virtual desktop so you guys can see the difference there, and then we'll conclude. All right, now we are in virtual desktop. Now I did try to use the virtual desktop performance overlay, but for whatever reason it didn't capture. Luckily the Steam performance capture did, so we're just gonna use that. 
watch the frame time graph there. You want that guy, right now it's in the yellow and you really want it in the green at all times. If you see yellow, you see red, those are frame drops, those are stutters. That's what I experience with this particular game, and not every game, but this particular one is what I experience with Half-Life Alex at the same high settings on my 7900 XT um, using virtual desktop. This does not happen to me when I use Steam Link. Um, and, I, and this is consistent for me between multiple games. So this is why I say sometimes it pays just to use virtual desktop and sometimes it pays to use Steam Link. In this particular game, I think I'm better off using Steam Link. There are games um, where like um, Hellsweeper VR where Steam Link doesn't even detect the controllers for my quest when using Steam Link. And in those cases, I'm better off using virtual desktop where it runs flawlessly. And when I have this going, it's all the way across the board in the green. And that's why I say it's hit or miss. It kind of depends on what game. And I really, truly do believe both actually complement each other. So long story short, my end recommendation is actually to get both. Steam Link is free, virtual desktop costs 20 bucks, and you can refund it within two weeks. This way you have a Swiss Army knife for whatever situation that you run into on your PC using VR. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Of course, if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.